role of a candidate, which many of you might be wondering right about this time in our presentation. Yeah, so the tool's all well and good, but the candidate is still at the sort of heart of the campaign. Uh, the candidate is key for uh, setting the tone of the campaign, uh, picking the policies that are going to be at the center of all of the messaging. Uh, and really, you know, the tool itself is only as good as the candidate inputs are. But um, the candidate is also responsible for being, you know, a player coach isn't even the right way of saying it. I, I might say a, um, a franchise owner player, right? Like this is somebody who is going to assemble the team, hire the, the coach uh, who is going to execute the vision and sort of mission of, of the franchise. Um, so while that's selling the vision and connecting with voters, part of the job is important. Um, pulling together a strong campaign team is just as important. And then ultimately, I think that a candidate is the asker in chief. They are responsible for asking for money. They are responsible for asking for time from volunteers and from the team that they assemble. They're responsible for asking for endorsements from political organizations that can help them to execute their voter contact goals. And they're ultimately responsible for asking voters for their vote. So the team that they build out um, and sort of empower to run uh, the campaign on their behalf is a critical part of what the campaign manager pulls together. And I always like to make a point of saying that uh, every campaign is different and not every campaign should be a huge operation. I think before I got into this line of work, when I thought about campaigns or, or the times that I would see them on TV, I would think about that scene that you'd see in a TV show where, you know, there's a big office with a bullpen styled set of desks and, uh, you know, campaign signs in, in the window and like 100 people making phone calls very quietly. And the fact of the matter is most campaign offices are nothing like that, uh, that you might see on a presidential campaign, you might see on a really big, uh, yeah, this is very, it's a, such a 70s image, but for some reason it still pops up uh, in pop culture now. And the fact of the matter is most campaigns don't even have an office. Uh, you'll, you know, Jerry mentioned the kitchen cabinet and you know, a group of people working from uh, a home around a kitchen table is a little bit more uh, the speed that you might end up seeing. And in the case of a municipal level election where you're running for uh, city council, where you're running for town clerk, you might not even have that many paid staff. Uh, you might really rely on friends, family, volunteer, uh, or possibly vendors uh, in part-time support uh, to help you with your campaign. At the end of the day, um, the it all comes down to sort of finding people who can own these responsibilities. Um, this is a good sort of starter list of responsibilities here. And on a large scale campaign, like a presidential campaign, it's as easy as slapping the word director at the end of these and then hiring a person who's going to hold each of these responsibilities, like a fundraising director, a communications director, a digital director. But uh, it's a little more complicated for most campaigns. For most efforts, you have someone who's going to hold multiple responsibilities. And I think sort of the key responsibilities that you need to uh, identify a owner for first are operations. And that's what a campaign manager does. A campaign manager could just as easily be called a project manager. This is someone who's responsible for hiring, for uh, managing, for uh, making sure that people execute against the plan that they are drawing up at the beginning of the campaign. They pay the bills, they control expenses, uh, they build the campaign trackers and sort of see where the campaign is going. And they just keep things moving. I think the best campaign managers are the people who enable others to do great work. Uh, a treasurer is probably the second most important uh, position, you know, somebody who's going to mind your compliance for you. And the good news here is this is one of the easiest positions to hire for because you can usually find an accountant who will do this on a part-time basis for you. 
So they do the bookkeeping, they approve spending, and they prepare all of the necessary financial reports uh, that you need uh, to be able to uh, comply with local election law. And I know that I saw a question in the chat about, can you run as an independent 501c3 org? Um, or is it considered volunteering already? Um, for the most part, when it comes to running for office, um, I'm wary of giving advice on how to structure your campaign um, without knowing the, the specific rules for that office. Um, so I, I would say uh, you know, we can help you to explore the, the right fit, but the, there are differences um, in almost every municipality on how elections are, are run. Um, and that is, yeah, it's exactly, that's where the, the treasurer comes in. So we can help you to explore the right answer for you, but I'd, I'd be wary to offer up any sort of, this is like my, I'm not a doctor, I play one on TV moment uh, of, of the call where I say uh, that's uh, something that's better addressed one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the third piece is a field director. Um, this is, you know, if if I only had funding to hire a campaign manager, uh, a treasurer, and one other person, I'd probably hire a field director because the field director is responsible for mobilizing and building relationships with volunteers. Um, they are able to sort of unlock more potential by way of cost savings because they find the people who are passionate enough about your campaign to do work for free. Um, sort of the lifeblood of the the effort. Uh, and they recruit, they train your volunteers, and they help to uh, lead voter contacts. Uh, we oftentimes say that voter contact should be 65 to 70 percent of your overall budget. And that can be registering voters, doing door to door, that could be phone banks, uh, that could be staffing polls. So that is uh, sort of, sort of the key there. Um, once you, you know, get to a point where you have a little more scalability, uh, there are other roles that you can fill. Um, you know, I think if you have your campaign manager, your treasurer, your field director as the like first sort of essential roles to fill, if you're uh, fortunate enough to have the budget to do so, then I would look at bringing in a finance team, uh, a political team, and a communications uh, team who could sort of support driving those, those efforts. Um, but in the case where you don't have the uh, funds to bring this on, this is all work that the campaign manager as sort of a generalist can lean into. And the nice thing is, as the it says on the screen here, AI can fill a lot of these roles if you use it wisely. And even if you're lucky enough to have a full-fledged staff campaign, your campaign uh, staff can use AI to make a lot more with less. Uh, it is a time saver uh, in such a major way. And it has been, uh, even for Jared and I, over the course of the last year, using this AI tool uh, to do things like get first drafts of scripts, to get first runs of press releases has uh, saved us a ton of time. 